there is only one Antarctica, and it's rapidly changing due to human influences, such as scientific research, tourism, and most notably, global climate change. Even today, Antarctica is a hard place to get to, and only a few thousand people a year visit. Because it has never been colonised by man, there are no natives to Antarctica. This means it's not a country itself, has no government, and therefore no way of controlling what happens there. During the 1950s, as more people travelled to Antarctica, countries including Britain tried to claim it for themselves, so the Antarctic Treaty was drawn up. First of all, the treaty says that the Antarctic is a demilitarised zone. It is also the world's first nuclear-free zone. It places particular emphasis on scientific collaboration. It says that the territorial claims to the Antarctic are considered suspended for the duration of the treaty. The treaty also says that information must be freely exchanged. And finally, the treaty says that it's open to signatory by any other United Nations member state. As well as fears about the development of tourism, there is another pressure that wasn't considered in the original 1961 treaty. When the Antarctic Treaty was uh, signed, uh, there was no mention of minerals and the possibility of mineral exploration, and there was no mention of the environment. And what we've seen, of course, in the last 30 or 40 years, is growing oil and natural gas exploitation in the Arctic. So some will say, if it's possible in the Arctic, might it be possible in the Antarctic? The fear is, as climate change occurs, it's likely that more rock could be exposed as ice melts, enabling people to get drilling rigs in. My fear is, though, in 50, 60 years' time, the debate over mining in the Antarctic might not seem as preposterous as it seems now. As well as the threat from tourism and mining, there is a third man-made pressure on Antarctica, which could be devastating, global climate change. Scientists who work in the Antarctic are saying that there's a real issue regarding ice cap stability. And the polar regions, in some senses, bear the brunt of human-induced global climate change. <laughs> 